Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Chris and on today's video we're talking about five masterpiece fragrances. So uh, starting off this video, I just want to say these fragrances are going to be things that I find interesting, things that I have you know, either emotional connections with, or I just find to be really, really artistic and creative in their nature. Some of these are no longer available. In fact, a lot of these are no longer available, which is kind of sad. I started doing this list and I'm thinking there, I literally sat there for days and I was like, what fragrances would fall under this category? And, you know, are they still around? Are they not around? And unfortunately, a lot of them are no longer around. And it's, it's kind of sad because these are fragrances that, you know, had the potential to be grand masterpieces. And I think that they were ahead of their time. I think they're also misunderstood. And some of these are, you know, still around. But like I said, most of them are not. So let's get into it to see what fragrances I find to be interesting enough to call them masterpieces. So I have my handy dandy notes here. And the first one I have listed here is Nisia the Eau de Toilette. Now, I've gotten the opportunity to smell the Eau de Parfum. I actually have an empty bottle of it and I also have a almost there's like a drop this much left of it of the eau de toilette and yes they're the same fragrance yes they are the same nameplate they just change concentration this fragrance worked a lot better whenever I was in eau de toilette there was a lot more of that violet note that really makes Nisia special and it really just captured the essence of Chanel and it captured the essence of her good friend Nisia, that friend that really inspired Chanel's wardrobe, that inspired Chanel's couture, that inspired Chanel to be free and bold. And it's just a very carefree, you know, wild, super elegant fragrance that is very hard to replicate into the Eau de Parfum concentration. I'm, I'm not sure if it's because of the change of oils when it comes to concentrations from the Eau de Toilette to the Eau de Parfum, but it doesn't work. It doesn't work as well, I should say. It still smells good. It's still a nice fragrance. It's still technically Nisia, but it's not quite there to the Eau de Toilette that, you know, I loved and remembered. And I remember wearing this whenever it was an Eau de Toilette and the fragrance wore forever, one, so it had a great longevity, it had a great performance, and on top of that, the actual fragrance itself had gotten me so many compliments from people you wouldn't even imagine would even care about fragrance because it's just a fragrance that had so much character, it had so much creativity, and the fragrance itself was just marvelous. Unfortunately, you can, well, I should say fortunately, you can still find the other toilet versions out there on the market. I will say that they are very, 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 very expensive. If you want something like Nisi, obviously they do have the Eau de Parfum. Just note that it's not going to be, you know, to that full sexiness that the original one did have. The next one I have on here, and just so you do know, they're not in any particular order. Um, I just decided to write them down as they would come to me. So it's not like the first one's the best one and the last one is the worst one or vice versa. The second one I have here listed is Louis Vuitton Cactus Garden. And this fragrance is one that I really wish I would have purchased when I had the opportunity to. It's a fragrance that captures the essence of the California desert. It's captivating. It's groundbreaking but it's simplistic enough. It's still going to be loved by the mainstream. It doesn't have anything that screams, look at me, I'm original, I'm different. It's not trying to be. It's trying to be liked. And it is a likable fragrance, but it does it in a very subtle way. It's not going to be a Sauvage. It's not going to be a Bleu de Chanel. It's not going to be an Aqua de Gio, but it's going to be a fragrance that's still massively appealing but it has that je ne sais quoi, it has soul, it has that beautiful vibrancy that we think about like Palm Springs, for example, or if we think of Joshua Tree. And uh, I did do a video on this one. It might be before or after this one itself because I actually don't have a bottle of it myself. I do have samples of it. And the fragrance to me really captures the essence of a cloudy desert when it rains. And People are like, how do you know it? That smells like every time I go to the desert, I swear to you, 
it can be the California desert. It can be the Nevada desert. It can be the Arizona desert. It rains like without fail. For some reason, I bring rain with me. But that's what this gives me. That's a very unique smell that you get in the desert as soon as it's going to rain or it has rained and it's still kind of cloudy. The sun is peeking through the clouds. That's what this fragrance definitely gives. And it gives you that beautiful romanticism that we all see California with. The next one I have, God, all three of these are discontinued actually. Yes. Uh, the next one I have is by Christian Dior and it is Midnight Poison. I cannot say how much I love this fragrance. I do have a bottle of it. It is my mom's. It was given to me as a gift from a really good friend when I worked for Dior. She had two bottles, one big one, one small one, and I hounded her forever to give me the bottle or to sell it to me or to give it to me or whatever she needed me to do to get that bottle, I would, you know, do it. And she ended up just giving me this smaller bottle, which was not even full, but I cherish every drop of that fragrance like you have no idea. Because the fragrance is so unique, so different, it captures the darker side of Dior's couture. I feel like it really captures John Galliano's more darker side of the, you know, fashion line whenever he was a creative director for Christian Dior. If you know about fashion, then you know what I'm talking about. He was very dramatic whenever he designed the couture for Christian Dior, but he also had a darkness to him, kind of like Alexander McQueen, not quite there, but he had a darkness to him, and that's what this fragrance captures, that essence of that darkness, and there was also some of that with Mr. Dior himself, not quite there, he was more romantic, but it also captures some of the romanticism that Mr. Dior carried so well in his actual couture designs as well, so this fragrance just through and through, captures the essence of Dior and their couture work. It is wet, it is sexy, it is opulent, but it's still subdued and quiet. It's not screaming in your face, because I feel like the poison line can kind of come off that way, so the original poison obviously is a little loud, it's a plum fragrance that kind of screams at you with a lot of spices, and I have to say that this one itself just is a really, truly well-balanced fragrance through and through. I am sad that it's no longer available. I wish it would bring it back. You can kind of get that same vibe with Gris Dior. Not quite there. They kind of have that same style of perfumery, but Midnight Poison is definitely one that I find to be a masterpiece, but it's unfortunately no longer available. The next one I have on my list is By the House of Gerland and it's Samsara. So they actually changed the bottle for this fragrance. It's now in those clear bottles with the stickers on them. I love this fragrance. It, I know a lot of people will probably say Shalimar, which is their classic, is better and is more, more of a classic, more of a masterpiece because of the, the story behind it. And to me, I would disagree with you. I find Samsara to be different. It's, it's a misunderstood fragrance, but it's a fragrance that if you were to actually go to the counter and spray on yourself and wear it for a little bit, you would fall in love with it because it's romantic. It is also going to have some emotion. It's going to have that Guerlain. Guerlain is an actual brand. I don't know what they do with their fragrances. If they like do some voodoo spell or something on the actual bottle before it goes down the production line. But this fragrance has soul. It has a sort of sadness that, you know, humans tend to have inside of them, you know, because of trauma or, you know, things that they experience in life. This fragrance carries that with it alongside the rest of the Gedlon family of fragrances. But this one is just so beautiful. It is a luxurious. It is deep. It is sophisticated. It is timeless as well. And I think that in today's world, it would be very, very popular. Um, I'm talking about the old red bottle. Like I said, they have changed it over to the new ones, but the smell has not changed, you know, at least not a lot, in my opinion. So if you can go out and smell this fragrance, you can find it pretty cheap on discounters as well, which is kind of sad that it's treated like garbage, really. But this is a beautiful scent that I think everyone needs in their collection if you are a lover of fragrances because it captures the essence of such an iconic perfume house like Guerlain and really just pushes it into the modern world and it's still a fragrance that is modern today because it was ahead of its time back. So I have three honorable mentions and um, these are, I, I will say that they really 
capture the essence of their brand and i think that's why i listed them on here i do think that they are masterpieces in their own right but i'm not going to say that they're masterpieces above any other fragrance out there i think and i'll explain to you why so the first one i have on here is no longer available and this is prada's is infusion the ohm which is that old bottle that prada used to have it's the same bottle that infusion the iris used to come in but it was the men's version and this fragrance was very misunderstood from the beginning to the moment it got discontinued and it was misunderstood because it was soapy clean fragrance which to most people kind of they, they thought it was boring and it wasn't it was a fragrance that really captured the essence of prada if you know prada as a brand they are very minimal and they sometimes throw a pop of something at you a pop of a print a pop of you know a cut on a jacket they're very quiet they're they're very they're not about logos everywhere they're just about the art of fashion and i feel like this fragrance really did capture that aesthetic for prada it's a very nice fragrance like i said it did come off as boring to some people because it smelled very soapy and clean and, and just very minimal but the fragrance itself really did capture the essence of Prada in a bottle. And I don't think that we, I mean, Infusion the Iris kind of does still, but we kind of lost that whenever Infusion the Ohm was discontinued by Prada. The next one I have is by Burberry, and this is part of the bespoke or the signature range, which is going to be their expensive one. This fragrance, the reason I don't didn't list it as you know a super masterpiece because i have some other things that are similar to it not quite to it but similar to it it's a perfume style that is not you know super revolutionary if you will so the fragrance i'm talking about today is called midnight journey and it's one of the ones that comes in those square bottles with those beautiful leather ribbons i do have this fragrance in my collection this is a fragrance that really captures again the essence of the brand it's capturing the essence of the trench coat it's capturing the environment of you know the house of burberry and what i mean by that is burberry is you know from the uk england in particular and england is very much known for being wet and kind of humid and kind of cloudy and kind of dark that's just the weather that they have. I mean, that's not all the time. There's obviously sunny days and, you know, hot and humid days. But for the most part, they are always raining. They have lots of cloudy days. And this fragrance really captures that. It captures the beauty of that trench coat walking down a London road with the rain or the cloudy sky. And it's an, it's a nice scent. It's, it's dark. It's sexy. It's mysterious. Just like the House of Burberry but it's timeless because burberry is not one to break the mold and be very revolutionary they're just kind of timeless and that's what this fragrance really gives it's a timeless gentleman's fragrance and the last one i have on here is probably due to emotional reasons it is lancome's trezor this is a very misunderstood fragrance by a lot of people because it falls within that category of being a spicy floral or as some people like to say an oriental to me, this fragrance is obviously very 90s, very, maybe a little bit early to, well, no, it's not early 2000s. It's very 90s, and it just captures the essence of Lancome. The fragrance is composed, it is elegant, it is very, it's, it's a very powerful woman that would wear this fragrance, and I think that's because, that's the reason I like it, because my mother would wear it when I was a little boy. So this might be, like I said, more of an emotional one, but this fragrance to me just is a masterpiece. It has beautiful nuances of sandalwood. It has beautiful nuances of florals. It has some citrix in there. It has some musks in there. It has some, it has everything in this fragrance and everything is working together, but the fragrance is still potent. It's still bright. It is still very sensual, very powerful. It is that powerful woman that is wearing that power suit back in the 90s and she doesn't she just doesn't take anything from anyone and that's what this actual fragrance really reminds me of and yeah i think it's a fragrance that is misunderstood that not a lot of people love but i think more people should fall in love with it because it's symbolic of the time this fragrance alongside coco bio de parfum 
really revolutionized perfuming back then. And I think that we don't give them credit where credit is due, but hey, it is what it is. So let me know down in the comments what your thoughts on this video are. Do you like these type of videos? Do you prefer the reviews? Let me know down below. Also make sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe for more fragrance-related content. Until next time, you guys, take care. Bye.